How's it going everyone? I recently updated my elementalist setup guide for 10.1 and I wanted to do the same for the physical build or what's more commonly known as the storm build now. So today we're going to cover the storm single target build. I'll do a separate video for the storm cleave build in the future, but I did want to get this out as soon as I could. We'll of course go through the talent setup for this, the rotation for this, and then a scenario just to give you a full overview of it. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with our talent setup here, we are only going to go through the enhancement side of the tree. The shaman side of the tree is going to vary depending on the type of content you're doing, but you do need to make sure that you are taking frost shock and lava burst as those are the only two pieces there that will affect the rotation. If you did play enhancement shaman in 10.0, then this is going to look very familiar to you because, well, the build hasn't changed at all. But I do quickly want to go over the changes to the deeply rooted elements, static accumulation, and thorns invocation talents. The idea behind Deeply Rooted Elements is still the same as it was in 10.0. We press Storm Strike or Wind Strike, and each cast of those gives us a chance to proc Ascendance. However, in 10.0, there was a lot of polls where you felt like you either got a ton of procs of Ascendance, or you felt like you got absolutely no procs of Ascendance. So in 10.1, Blizzard tried to smooth this out a little bit, and the way they did it isn't really reflected in the tooltip. What's really happening now is at the beginning of combats, we really have a very low percent chance to get an Ascendance proc when we use Storm Strike. It starts off somewhere between like 0 or maybe 1 or 2 percent. And then every time we press Storm Strike that doesn't trigger an Ascendance proc is increasing the chance for us to get Ascendance on the next Storm Strike cast by around 1 percent. So for example, if you cast 20 Storm Strikes in a row, your chance of your next Storm Strike giving you an Ascendance proc is going to be somewhere around 20 percent. And this of course does reset once we do get an Ascendance proc. Over the course of a fight though, the Ascendance proc rate still ends up being around 7% of your Storm Strikes giving you that proc, and that's why the tooltip is still kind of saying 7% chance on every Storm Strike. Personally, I do think there is a noticeable difference between 10.0 and 10.1 on how Deeply Rooted Elements feels. I'm still not a huge fan of the Deeply Rooted Elements gameplay, but I do appreciate Blizzard trying to smooth this out a bit. The changes to Static Accumulation and Thorim's Invocation are why this build has been pushed more towards being a Storm build rather than a physical build. Static Accumulation now gives Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning a 10 or 20% chance to refund Maelstrom Weapon Stacks that are spent on those casts, which gives us some more opportunities in the build for Maelstrom Weapon Stack generation. And this is important for two reasons. For one, the stack refunds are giving us cooldown reduction on our Feral Spirits so we can get those up more often. And the more often that we can get up to 10 Maelstrom Weapon Stacks, then the more often we can proc our Legacy of the Frost Witch talent and get Storm Strike refunds if Storm Strike does happen to go on cooldown from not getting a Stormbringer proc. Thorim's Invocation is also still largely working the same, but now it's also increasing the damage of our Lightning Bolts and Chain Lightnings by 20%. Which is nice to have because even though Elemental Blast is still our primary Maelstrom Weapon Stack spender, we are going to be doing plenty of Chain Lightnings thanks to our tier set bonus and plenty of Lightning Bolts as well. Outside of these three things, nothing too major changed with any of the other talents, so let's go ahead and move on to the rotation. Looking at the priority list here, I don't think anything should be too surprising. Feral Spirit is obviously our number one priority at all times. Each wolf being out gives us a 15% increase to physical damage, and we do have the opportunity to actually cast this twice and have four wolves out now with our Maelstrom Weapon Stack generation, so definitely want to make sure you're using this on cooldown as much as possible. After that is Doomwinds. Again, we just want to get this off as much as we can. Keep in mind though, if you don't have Storm Strike available when you're about to use Doomwinds, you might want to actually hold it for a GCD or two. That way you will have Storm Strike available at the start of Doomwinds in order to maximize the amount of Storm Strikes you can get in during that window. And lastly, we have our third cooldown in Sundering. This is, of course, high priority due to our tier set bonus. This leads us into what is probably the most complex portion of this priority list. And basically what we're trying to accomplish with this step is to have our Thorns Invocation primed with Lightning Bolts during Ascendance. However, if Thorns Invocation is already primed with Chain Lightning and Crackling Thunder, which is the buff from our 4 set tier set bonus, is currently active, then we can go ahead and not worry about repriming Thorns Invocation. 
I will also say that if a sentence is about to run out, then you definitely want to go ahead and get a final wind strike off rather than using a lightning bolt to reprime Thorm's invocation. So you really only want to do this if Ascendance is also still going to be active for another two or so seconds. I know this sounds confusing, but we'll go over this in a scenario after this and hopefully that will help clear this up. The other piece of this that I want to go ahead and call out now is while I'm making this, Blizzard actually announced some shaman changes for 10.1.5. And with part of those changes, what they're doing is actually nerfing the bonus damage that Chain Lightning gets from our tier 4 set. And assuming that that change does make it to live in 10.1.5, then we will no longer need to worry about using Chain Lightning in single target, which would also mean that we would no longer need to worry about repriming Thorm's invocation from Chain Lightning back to Lightning Bolt. So if you are watching this video sometime in the future, just keep that in mind. If that does happen, I'll at least post an update to this video in the description, so keep an eye out for that. For the rest of the priority list, our focus is really going to be on smashing Stormstrike or Windstrike as much as we can. We want to be using those just to get those Ascendance procs thanks to Deeply Rooted Elements. And after that, we'll be looking to spend our Maelstrom Weapon Sacks, which we do need to spread out across three different Maelstrom Weapon Spenders. Now the reason that we want to look across three different spenders is because, well for one, we're running Elements of Blast, so we do want to make sure that one of those charges is always on cooldown, that way we don't miss out on any uses of it, so that is why the first priority is going to be Elements of Blast if we do have two charges of it. The second spender is Chain Lightning, and this is only going to be if the buff from our Forza is actually active. And this is because when the Crackling Thunder buff is active, Chain Lightning is actually doing better single target damage than Lightning Bolt does. Plus, on top of that, Chain Lightning is refunding Maelstrom Weapon Stacks in this case, which is also contributing to our Feral Spirit cooldown coming back faster. After this, we basically want to use Elemental Blast if we have charges of it available, otherwise we just spend on Lightning Bolts. The rest of the rotation should be fairly straightforward. We want to use Ice Strike if we have Dew Winds active, otherwise we can look to apply Flame Shock to our target if it did fall off, or refresh it if it's nearing falling off, and then we can just use Ice Strike, Lava Lash, Frost Shock, Flame Shock, depending on what we have available. But let's move right along, get into a scenario now, and that way you can see this more in action. For this scenario, we will assume that Sundering, Pharaoh's Spirit, and Doomwinds are all on cooldown already, and we are not currently in a Ascendance window. We will say that Sundering was recently used though, leaving us with two stacks of Crackling Thunder, and we'll also say that we have five stacks of Maelstrom Weapon, and Thorim's Invocation is currently primed with Lightning Bolt. Lastly, we'll go ahead and assume that as we're using our abilities, our Maelstrom Weapon stacks will be building up over time, so keep an eye on those. The first thing we want to do here is to start off with a Storm Strike. And unfortunately we don't get a Stormbringer proc, but let's assume that Elemental Blast isn't currently at 2 charges, so we can now look to use a Chain Lightning in order to spend one of the stacks of Crackling Thunder that we currently have. Do keep in mind, this is repriming our Thorim's Invocation to Chain Lightning as well. Let's say we end up getting another Stormbringer proc here, so we can go ahead and cast another Storm Strike. And even better, we'll assume that this procs Deeply Rooted Elements and we actually go into Ascendance. So now we can go ahead and look to use a Wind Strike. And when we do use this Wind Strike, a Chain Lightning will also be fired off thanks to Thorium's Invocation, and that will use the remaining Crackling Thunder buff we have. And this is where the fourth priority down on the rotation starts to come in. If we didn't have Crackling Thunder already active, then we would have gone ahead and actually reprimed Thorm's Invocation back to Lightning Bolt there instead of using a Wind Strike. But because Crackling Thunder was active, we did want to go ahead and just use a Wind Strike there. But now we can go ahead and look to use a Lightning Bolt in order to prime Thorm's Invocation back on Lightning Bolt. We then use another Wind Strike, and if we're unfortunate enough to knock at another Stormbringer proc here, then we would need to look all the way down to Ice Strike, assuming that Flame Shock is still applied to our target and it's not about to fall off. And lastly, we can go ahead and use another Wind Strike again. And that pretty much wraps up the rotation. Let's quickly talk about when exactly you should run this build. If you did see my Elementalist setup guide, then I already kind of alluded to where you would use this build, but to go over that again here, when it comes to the raid, you would be looking to use this on single target boss fights, so Kazara, Amalgamation Chamber, Rashok, and Magmarax are definitely good use cases for this build. 
I would also say that if you are doing this on normal or heroic difficulty, you could definitely run this build on Forgotten Experiments, Skarn, and maybe even Notharian as well, depending on how fast your group is DPSing down the boss and if the adds are dying very quickly or not. Outside of Raid though, you're never really going to want to run this build. It is purely single target focus. As soon as there are more targets in the picture, this build really falls off hard and the elemental setup is going to be much better or even the storm cleave build, which I'll do a video on in the near future as well. But for now, I think this wraps up about everything for this video. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below and have a nice day.